Meet the praying mantis. There are a couple species native to North Carolina where this video was shot. These uh, specimens you see here are between three and four inches long and are among the largest insects in North America, at least in length and uh, leg length. They are not uncommon here in the Appalachian Mountains, but not too often seen because of their superb camouflage. As we watch the behavior of these specimens, let me read to you excerpts from Wikipedia and National Geographic Online. And I quote, the term mantises, or the more colloquial praying mantises, should be used when referring to the entire order, often mistakenly spelled P-R-E-Y-I-N-G, mantis, since they are notoriously predatory. They are in fact named for the typical prayer-like stance. The word mantis derives from the Greek word mantis for prophet or fortune teller. The closest relatives of mantises are the termites and the cockroaches. By any name, these fascinating insects are formidable predators. They have triangular heads poised on a long neck or elongated thorax. Mantids can turn their heads 180 degrees to scan their surroundings with two large compound eyes and three other simple eyes located between them. The compound eyes are capable of seeing images and colors. The three simple eyes perhaps tell the difference between light and dark. The simple eyes are arranged in a triangle between the antennae. Typically green or brown and well camouflaged on the plants among which they live, mantises lie in ambush or patiently stalk their quarry. They use their front legs to snare their prey with reflexes so quick that they are difficult to see with a naked eye. Their legs are further equipped with spikes for snaring prey and pinning it in place. Mantises are exclusively predatory and their diet usually consists of living insects. Larger species have been known to prey on small lizards, frogs, birds, snakes, and even rodents. And how about this story off the internet written by a blogger on a site that features insects. The other day while I was working in the yard, my son urgently called me, Dad, a praying mantis caught a hummingbird. Not sure what to expect, but knowing my son is not one to make things up, I came running to see for myself. By the time I arrived, it was too late for the poor hummer. My scientifically minded son had already begun taking pictures and studying the scene. As you can see from the photographs, this hungry mantis captured and killed a hummingbird not much smaller than itself. The mantis used its spiny left foreleg to impale the hummingbird through the chest while leaving his right leg free. We surmised that the mantis ran the hummer through, dangled its full weight on all its forelegs, while he consumed the flesh of the hummingbird from the abdomen. After he had his fill, the mantis gave his foreleg several swift jerks and freed his leg. This was an unfortunate experience for the Hummer, but we are amazed to realize how fast, precise, and powerful the mantis must be to accomplish such a feat. This was posted along with the photos of the, of the mantis with the hummingbird by Wa Richard L. Walkup from Westchester, Pennsylvania. Prey are caught and held securely with grasping spike forelegs. The first thoracic segment, the prothorax, is commonly elongated and flexibly articulated, allowing for a greater range of movement of the front limbs while the remainder of the body remains more or less immobile. The articulation of the head is also remarkably flexible, permitting nearly 300 degrees of movement in some species, allowing for a great range of vision. Their compound eyes have a large binocular field of vision and they don't have to move the remainder of their body to do it. As their hunting relies heavily on vision. 
They are primarily diurnal, but many species will fly at night and be commonly encountered at lights. Mantises are masters of camouflage and most species make use of protective coloration to blend in with the foliage or substrate, both to avoid predators themselves and to better snare their victims. Various species have adapted to not only blend with the foliage, but to mimic it, appearing as either living or withered leaves, sticks, tree bark, blades of grass, flowers, or even stones. Manises are highly visual creatures, and you can notice that most everywhere I go with the camera, the mantis follows me with his eyes. Depending on the species, the female lays between 10 and 400 eggs. These are typically deposited in a frothy mass that is produced by glands in the abdomen. This froth then hardens, creating a protective capsule with a further protective coat, and the egg mass is called an uthaca. Depending on the species, this can be attached to a flat surface wrapped around a plant or even deposited in the ground. As in related insect groups, mantises go three, through three stages of metamorphosis, egg, nymph, and adult. The nymph and adult insect are structurally quite similar, except that the nymph is smaller, has no wings, or functional genitalia. Nymphs are, are also sometimes colored differently from the adult, and the early stages are often mimics of ants. Generally, mantises are protected simply by virtue of concealment. When directly threatened, many mantis species stand tall, spread their forelegs with their wings fanning out wide, makes them seem larger and more threatening. I hope you found this brief look at one of our most interesting insects, the praying mantis, both interesting and informative. And thanks for watching.